Rev up your engines. WEI is the awesome. What's your opinion on a BMW 318i 2001? 143 horsepower. What experience do you have with them? I'm thinking about buying one soon. Thank you. Okay. Well, if you believe my advice and you think, you know what, I'm, I know what I'm talking about, don't buy that car. They're endless money pits. All BMWs are. On the other hand, if it's cheap enough and you want a toy, uh, I've had people buy those things. What is it now? 2001, you're talking about, you know, 18-year-old cars, 2019 just came out, so uh, it's an old car. If you can buy one for $1,000, $1,500, go ahead and have it as a toy, but don't expect to use it for an everyday driver. That's just not something you don't want to do. They, they're endless money pits as they age. They cost a fortune to fix. The parts cost a lot, and you often need a special BMW computer to reprogram just about everything on it. Jonathan Zarco says, hey, Scotty, what do you think of a 2005 Scion XB? Okay, those are excellent cars. I don't know why Toyota did that. For a while, they made Scions. And uh, same company, Toyota made them, but they called them Scions. They were pretty bulletproof cars. They lasted a long time. They were well-made cars. And now they don't make them anymore. They're just selling them under the Toyota brand again. I guess they thought, oh, we're going to sell a whole bunch of these to the young kids. It'll be a new brand of car, and ah, they're kind of silly doing that. I think they should have just kept them with Toyota. Those are good cars, but any car like that that's 14 years old, you still want to have a mechanic like me check it out before you buy it, because you never can't trust anybody. You don't know if it's been wrecked, flooded, stolen, and we mechanic can tell in half an hour uh, if it's got any serious problems by scanning it and driving it around. JM says, help me. I got an old 13 Ford F-150 and a bumper and bumper traffic can stay stuck on first gear and the RPM stays stuck until I push on the gas. If I let go of the gas, it keeps going on its own. Okay, well, if you let go of the gas, it keeps going. First thing you want to fix is that. Sometimes the throttles just stick. I got a video... Make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. It shows how to spray the throttle to get the cleaner in there. So you don't have to uh, worry about the throttle sticking. Pray it's a sticking throttle. Because if you fix that and it doesn't idle high anymore and it still stays stuck in first gear, then you've got some kind of a transmission problem. And those can be very expensive to fix. But realize that the transmission shifts by data it gets from the throttle position sensor. So if the throttle's sticking, it's going to make the transmission get weird too. So try cleaning that throttle first. Liberty City Killer says, I got an 01 Pontiac Aztec. I bought it for $1,500. Bucks. It makes a clicking sound when I turn the wheel and tends to pull to the left. I have multiple oil leaks in the front, too. Okay, well, the first thing you want to do is fix the clicking noise. That's generally worn CV joints. Just jack a car up, look under, and look at the inside of each wheel. They have CV joints. They have rubber boots. Odds are one of those boots is ripped. The grease is leaked out. Then you just buy a whole CV axle. You don't change the joint because now you can get aftermarket entire axle assemblies for like 59 bucks for those things and just replace the whole axle. As for the oil leaks, I know it's usually it's just a valve cover gasket leaking. Look at the valve cover and see oil under it. Just change that. You can do it yourself. It's a pretty simple job. Donna Kluge says, I got an 88 Chevy Estervan. Should I do a tune-up before replacing the cat honk? Can I wait to do the tune-up, or should I replace the cat first? Okay, that's kind of a chicken and the egg question. If your car runs poorly, it can trip a code for a bad catalytic converter. So the first thing you always want to do is tune up the car, put some cleaner in it, and drive it around a week or so. Sometimes, if you have an inefficient cat code, it'll go away. Now, once you tune it up, if it still has a problem with a cat, and that's an 88, you're probably going to need a cat, but at least it's an old car. So on the old ones, you can just have a universal one put on. On the new ones, they're pretty vehicle-specific, and if you don't use the correct one that costs a lot of money, it probably won't work right. But with those older ones, you can often put on a universal cat, and they'll work perfectly fine. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.